Hello again. Here we are trying to talk about the hard and soft facts. What makes partnerships work? There's a lot of recipes out there and I'm jumping right away into one of them that I found. Um, five points. The capture really um, a good essence of what it takes to monitor basically and to set up as your pillars in your partnerships. The very, very top one and we have gone through these top questions around the purpose of your idea in this top idea already. And we are circling back to that point. Partnerships that focus on mutually agreeable business objectives and goals. Partnerships where you understand each other's purpose and really align on it. Those are the ones that work out. Second point, commitments. Spell out the commitments in that partnership. Agreements are the foundation of such alliances or affiliations. Everybody needs to know what is your task, what you're signed up for, so that you can deliver on it on the other side. There should be no question left open in this context. Third point, very much connected to that. It's about being realistic uh, in your expectations. That can only happen if you talk to your partners honestly and openly. And everybody takes the responsibility for their own actions. In parallel, making this relationship a high priority. Meaning, you have to make sure that each one of the partners is happy and satisfied with how things are going. And if this is not the case, you need to have measures in place that help you align again. That is the number four. Risks and opportunities need to be managed. There will be things that go wrong because none of the plans we will ever make can be perfect. So we need to cater for those times when there's disagreements. There has to be a dispute resolution process in place, meaning you have to have ways of how to deal with different um, viewpoints, different approaches, how to deal with problems and challenges that will come along the way. In the end, people have to agree this is not about you know, democracy here. This is not about what the majority you know, wants. This is about all of the partners to be in the same boat and to have a harm, harmony somehow or balanced um, decision in the end where everybody is on board. Number five. Is there maybe a, you know, an end of life, a shelf life for that partnership? Does it apply only for a certain amount of time or certain period of time? So it's very important to define this because nothing is, is worse than you know, being in a partnership and it doesn't serve the partners anymore. The important point here, to come back and review this once in a while. Actually, this is a very good advice, even for um, you know, personal partnerships in life. Um, come back and do some feedback and review sessions once in a while and uh, reassess if both partners um, are mutually benefiting from that partnership. I believe that partnerships could be visualized with you know, a sailing boat. And I've chosen 
this type of a sailing boat or this type of a boat very intentionally. I think um, partnerships are a long-term commitment and you need to find ways to navigate through these times. And um, that's why you are also asked if you're you know, working in your teams to reflect and um, to give your feedback uh, to your team members once in a while and a regular intervals about uh, seven dimensions. And um, these dimensions are used in the team gyro. And I would like to give you a short intro into those dimensions. It starts with attitude, goes into openness and initiative, support, efficiency, creativity, and performance. And let me now dive into these dimensions. Let's start with attitude. What do I mean when I talk about attitude? And I've uh, spelled out here three keywords that make up an attitude. Authenticity. Say what you mean and do what you say. This is really important. Very much connected to respecting each other without judgment. Not an easy one because uh, we are all somehow subjective and, and biased. So that's why failure tolerance comes with me under the dimension of attitude. You need to be able to admit something that went wrong or something that maybe you don't know. These very soft factors, I would say, make up an attitude. Next dimension is openness. How transparent can you work with others? How neutral and from a distance you can share positive and negative experiences? How open are you in terms of um, doing things in different ways? And how much of learning potential is is uh, in you, is within you, and how much aware are you of that? This leads me into the next dimension called initiative. It has to do with collaboration, sharing work, but going beyond your own works, your own tasks and contribute to others, and then build on top of these contributions that come together and be that force, be that, um, yeah, that initiator who asks for what is needed and where support and help needs to be provided. This comes together in a co-creation. You really build something together and someone will maybe take the lead or several people that take the lead to proactively make sure that you move along as a team, that you get um, work done. Next dimension is support. How does support show up in life? It's about your listening skills. Can you listen to others? without putting your own interests, your own opinions up front all the time? Can you really communicate on several levels of listening with each other? Motivation, how can you motivate yourself, but also others? How can you be that positive force that helps along your team members um, along the way? along the difficult uh, situations and moments when things maybe don't work that well. And how can you help others with your advice? 
actively contributing beyond your own tasks again. Coming to the dimension of efficiency. Now, this is all the topics around setting up your work environment in a way that communication works. What tools do you need to be efficient at work? Going into roles and goals. Who is best at what? What are you signing up for to do? And what are the goals, the resources and the time, the time schedule within you should uh, reach those goals. The next dimension is creativity. With all the topics that we have touched until now, how can you bring in this originality that thinking outside the box, your strength, your creative power, and that positivity, this energy that keeps you getting up every morning, no matter what. Last dimension, performance. Maybe easier to measure, because there's a lots of numbers involved. It's about being on time and finishing things um, as you have planned them. It's about your active contribution in meetings and discussions. And it's about delivering. It's about execution and engagement. Very intentionally, I've come to that dimension as the last point of the seven, because there are so many things, so many um, building blocks, so many puzzle pieces that need to be in place to be able to perform as an individual and as a team. Thank you very much for listening. There's lots of different recipes of how you can make partnerships work. Um, it's about people in the end. It's not organizations you partner with, even though there's you know, legal agreements around partnerships between organizations. But in the end, it's people you work with again. Um, you don't work with the legal entity uh, of an organization. You work with people. That's why this is so complex. So please take your pen and paper again and write down the questions that came into your mind. The questions that come into your mind now. As a reflection to what we just touched. See you on the other side.